Leaving Sun Moon Lake, we made our way down to southern Taiwan by hiring a car service to take us from Sun Moon Lake to Kenting, specifically the city of Hengsheng. Now we could have taken the bus, then a train, and then a bus again, but this was much simpler. Just make sure to work out the price ahead of time. In Hengcheng, we picked up a rental car and made our way to our Airbnb located in the Manzhou Township, a short drive away. There are a lot of random dogs running around in Taiwan. For supper, we ate in Manzhou. There are a few places to choose from with lots of great food at even better prices. This juice place was a real gem. Drinks made fresh to order. The mango drink was my absolute favorite. And of course, the town has a 7-Eleven. This area here is where most of the restaurants are located. All right, there's our beautiful car rental. So this is the Airbnb that we're renting down in towards Kenting. Got a nice outdoor hot tub here. The place we're renting from is called Wild East and you can find it on Airbnb. Really, really nice couple. They were really helpful in helping us getting the car rented. This is uh, the outside, kind of a nice little common area. There's a nice little map here of the southern part of Taiwan. We are right up around here. And this is the Manhu, I don't know how to pronounce that properly, but the Manhu Township, that's the smallest town close to here, about a four minute drive. Today I'm gonna head over here to, I don't know how to pronounce this, but Zhaoshudu, and there is uh, some surfing to be had there. And sorry for my voice to sound so hoarse, but I caught cold on the plane ride over and still recovering. Anyways, in this southern part of Taiwan, we're gonna explore it. And really you need a car to do most of the exploring. The people that we rented from here, they were really helpful in helping us uh, rent the car because the place we rent the car from, to be perfectly honest, was a little sketchy. The guy that we rented from looked like he got punched in the face, mostly because uh, he's a, I think, an avid chewer of betel nut. So look that up if you don't know what that is. But yeah, it's a, it's a nut that they chew that is a powerful stimulant. Kind of interesting. So, uh, all part of the adventure. And also, they didn't, ex they kind of accepted credit cards, but then they didn't accept credit card because their machine was down. And then they just ended up saying, just take the car. But then they wanted our passport, so a little sketchy. But anyways, these guys here at Wild East was really helpful in helping us get that all sorted out. So let's go look at the inside. Of a dining area over here, one of the bedrooms, cooking area. This is kind of cool. Propane tank inside, bathroom and shower area, and then the last third bedroom. So yeah, this place is really nice. I'd recommend it for sure. Um, yeah, so we're just gonna go explore this southern part of Taiwan and just see what we come across. All right, let's get going. So here's the local surf report. This is interesting. The sea is warmer than the air, which is cool. Check out this onshore wind. Nothing but red. Not great. Taiwan being an island facing eastward to the Pacific Ocean, I had to check out the surf. Its east coast is exposed to all kinds of surf from the north to the south with a growing surf scene. I rented a surfboard and tried my luck. There was only a few people out at Ganku Beach. I was visiting just as their winter starts. It was super windy, not the best conditions. Surf was maybe waist high, onshore winds, but at least the water was warm, like 28 degrees Celsius warm. It was so nice, whereas I'm used to like 10 degrees Celsius. So 
So this is the place, Summer Point, where I rented a board and then hit the beach. Great place, really friendly. It's like a surf and yoga, be, uh, bed and breakfast. They serve food, drinks. Really cool, really nice vibe. All right, let's uh, go exploring. The ocean is angry. Holy crap. Leaving Gangku Beach, we made our way down the coast to the southernmost point in Taiwan, stopping along the way to take in the gorgeous views. The high winds made for some great model airplane slope soaring. Alright, so we're heading to the southernmost point in Kenting National Park. I check out a lighthouse. The surfing this morning was, it was really windy, um, but it was okay. Caught a few waves. Uh, yeah, it's a lot of onshore wind, so not very good. Talked to the guy at the rental place and he said that this is the start of their winter in Taiwan. So it's going to be a lot of wind and the surf kind of really gets really choppy. But hey, we're here. Had to go give it a try. It was fun. Water is super warm. Awesome. That definitely was a big plus. Anyways, also met a guy out there surfing that uh, recognized me. He's a viewer on my channel. So anyways, um, if you're watching, hi, I never caught your name, but uh, thanks for watching. Soccer ball. Besides the southernmost point, there is a lighthouse to see as well, but we never made it there. We just headed back to town and had supper, trying another local joint that was really tasty. What this is, it's like a fern, isn't it? Mmm, <laughs> pork belly. Today we are going to explore the Kenting National Park area, specifically Kenting National Forest Recreation Area and Shedding Nature Park. So we're heading to, uh, well there's supposed to be fairy caves, but it took us down, GPS took us down this sort of off the beaten track. So we hope we're going in the right area, the right space. It's pretty. Very rural. Google wanted to take us the most direct route. Here we are driving through Henshin to Kendi, and it seems like it's on a major highway to go down. Lots of stuff around here. So we're heading over to the Kending or Kenting Visitor Center. One thing about this area, it kind of looks a little bit like Florida. It's very tropical, a lot of palm trees. Here we are uh, in Kenting National Park and we're heading to the Stalagmite Caves. It's really beautiful. Right, let's go get some tickets to go see the Stalagmite Caves. Alright, let's uh, head up to the Fairy Cave or the Stalagmite Cave. Okay, so there's Visitor Center, Stalagmite Cave. Yeah, that is a big tree. All right, we've arrived at the visitor center. So this park is beautiful. It's a nice change if you want to get outside of the large cities in Taiwan and check out some of the nature. It's a great place to go. So really to explore this whole southern part of Taiwan, the Kenting National Park, the beaches, um, any of the hikes or walks, you really need at least two days. And if you're going to do any of the larger hikes, which there are, there's some nice hidden ones, 
you probably need a few days. So really we're just here for a couple days just to check it out. Right over to the stalagmite cave. Wouldn't want to fall into that. We could view the big stalagmite, but it was closed off from walking around it, unfortunately. Next, we made it over to the fairy cave, but it was closed for maintenance. Oh, the fairy cave is closed. They're doing work. Yeah, maybe that's why there's nobody here. Check out the way those trees grow. That's too cool. The strangler phenomenon. The Sea View Tower gives an amazing 360 degree view of the whole area. The view from the observation tower is amazing. You get a full panoramic view of the southern tip of Taiwan. I was surfing down there yesterday and then over there you can get some great views of the seashores. After taking a rest in the tower, we walked a few more of the trails and then tried to visit First Ravine. Oh, it looks like First Ravine is closed due to damage. I guess they do all their maintenance right now. But this ravine ever cool. Look at that tree, it's just growing right at the edge. That's crazy. Oh, this is nature at work. All right, we're heading out of the Kenting National Recreation Area and Park. And I totally thought it was worth the price of admission. Uh, a couple of things were closed due to maintenance. They were going to do some upgrading to some lighting. But yeah, uh, the walks, you know, allocate probably three hours, two to three hours if you want to see everything. Anyways, I highly recommend. I don't know what the story is behind this tree. It's like four trees in one. We then made our way back out to the entrance. Along the way, we came across some Taiwanese monkeys. We were told to watch our belongings because they think you might have food. We then made our way over to Shedding Nature Park, but on the way, we came across this little guy. Here's 
All right, we're here at the Shedding Nature Park, just a two minute drive down the road from the Kenting National Forest Recreational Area. Let's go check it out. I think you can see some monkeys, there's some walks, some sea views and stuff, so it's a little hike. Let's go check it out. Rift Valley is formed as a result of dissolution and tension from the uplift of coral reef. Okay, something got lost in translation there. But anyways, it's, it's a neat. ravine. It's neat. Oh, look more of those trees. Boy, it just wants to survive. I like shortcuts. You can see the canopy of the trees. All right, Skyward Pavilion, half a kilometer. I guess we're going through. Ooh, what a wind tunnel. Another pavilion. Wooden gazebo which commands a sprawling view of the area is an ideal place to observe coral reef plants and eagles. They have all these pavilions set up everywhere where you can do bird watching, which seems like a very popular um, spot for it. And they're even doing like a migration survey um, for raptors up here. So it's kind of cool. So we just checked out a few of these and we're probably going to head out after this. But it was totally really worth uh, checking out. It didn't cost anything, just the price of parking. Really neat. And we were up right there earlier today. Great view from there. For supper, we ate back in our town. Again, like our other meals, it was delicious and inexpensive. So here's a map of Kenting National Park, and I'm just gonna quickly recap what we did the last two days. We're staying up around this area here in the Mantau Township. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, but anyways, it's up around here. On our first day, we made our way over to Gangkuk Beach, where I rented a surfboard from the Summer Point Beach House and did some surfing there. It's real windy, but it was still fun. Water's super warm, great place, great area. The beach isn't so great for swimming. After that, we made our way down the coast here for some scenic views that were really beautiful, very Instagram worthy, certainly a lot of people taking photos, but very scenic along here. Then we made our way all the way down to the southernmost tip of Taiwan and checked out that point. There's also a lighthouse there that you can check out. We saw it, but we didn't actually stop to go look at it. That was our first day. On our second day, we left and we made our way over to the visitor center of the park. And then from there, we made our way to the Kenting Forest Recreational Area. And in there, that was really cool, which is what this map is over here. We parked, made our way through, looked at a few of the sites, did a couple of the loops. There is a really great view up here at the Sea View Tower. Highly recommend that. 
Some of these walks were really cool to see the ravines, the coral rocks, um, the trees growing in the coral rocks. That was really cool. And then we took the long loop and walked our way out. This park I highly recommend. We really enjoyed it. Then after visiting this, we went over a short drive, two minute drive over to the Shedding Nature Park where it was free admission and we just walked around in there. So to recap, this southern part of Taiwan has a lot to do and explore. It's really best explored if you have a car or if you rent a scooter. Um, we rented our car from the Hensheng uh, Township or town. Um, it's the, one of the largest towns down in this area. Um, our Airbnb host helped us rent it because they didn't really speak English and it, like I said previously, it was a little sketchy, it was a little weird, but anyways, it all worked out. So yeah, this is uh, the largest township, but a lot of people, our Airbnb host said, rent their car in Kaohsiung and drive down too. So that's another option. But as you can see here, there's all kinds of stuff, all kinds of beaches. There's an aquarium, there's springs, there's snorkeling spots, there's um, nice beaches down in this area. The visitor center uh, mentioned that uh, those would be cool to check out. But certainly we would need quite a few hours to do all of this. And in this trip, we didn't have enough time to do everything. So plan accordingly. We also drove by this rock here, Shifan Rock. It's a rock that you kind of like would see in places like Thailand where it just kind of um, protrudes out of the water that was really cool so that's worth checking out and like I said there's awesome really great views in this whole area really scenic really lush I highly recommend coming down here and checking it out if you want a break from visiting some of the larger cities in Taiwan we had an absolute amazing time in the Kenting area in the southern part of Taiwan I would totally recommend two to four days in this area depending on what type of activities you like to do all right, that's it for now. We're gonna be off to Kaohsiung, so keep an eye out for that video. Bye for now. Thanks for watching.